Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. All right, welcome everyone to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley. Wow, what an unbelievable broadcast we have for you today. You may have heard of God being in the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day leading the children of Israel through the wilderness. But it was more than just a, a cloud or a, uh, up in the sky to, for direction. It was divine protection. It was the presence of God literally in the land. And so today's broadcast, we're going to share with you how that just recently there's been a pillar of cloud that appeared again before the nation of Israel and the timing of it cannot be an accident. It has to be a sign by the Lord that he is continuing to keep his hand upon his land. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new book I've just finished called Reflections from the Land of the Prophets. This book is filled with beautiful pictures, a pictorial, if you will, of the Holy Land and some definite great insight to the prophets that once spoke mightily in the times leading us up to the present. It's a prophetic word, a reflection of what God has spoken, not only historically from the past, but for the future. Go to my website. It's available now. All right, all right. So what are you talking about, Pastor Begley, about this pillar of cloud? <clears throat> well, first of all, we're going to be in the Bible. We're going to be in Exodus chapter 14. We're going to be in Numbers chapter 14, where uh, God absolutely is in the cloud in a great, great sign that his presence is with the nation of Israel, with the children of Israel as they're leaving the land of Egypt. And uh, there's, here's some things that are happening. Uh, not long ago, the United Nations was working on a resolution to divide the land of Israel. We did a program on this recently, how that there were six resolutions passed. One was to create what was called intensification of negotiation, that the world body, governing body of the United Nations said is passed a resolution by a vote of 153 to 7. Israel, you will negotiate with Palestinians on a two-state solution. And we will oversee that. In other words, if you can't, we'll do it for you. Now, we know that Benjamin Netanyahu, the uh, Prime Minister of Israel, has been saying for a long time, he's willing to work out any kind of an agreement, but it's got to be that, that Israel has to be able to defend itself. You cannot go back to the pre-1967 borders in an indefensible border. Now, meanwhile, while that was being discussed, uh, they were getting ready to bring a six resolutions to the floor of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And then ISIS attacked Israel. They attacked them over the Golan Heights, the same area that Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 says that Israel will be attacked in the great battle of Gog and Magog. Now, Israel's been attacked over the Golan Heights before. In 1967, during the Six-Day War, Israel was attacked uh, by the Lebanese from, from the north, from the Egyptians from the Sinai Peninsula, by the Jordanians from the south, and by Syria over the Golan Heights. So this isn't the first time, but uh, ISIS struck Israel for the first time. Now, they fired across the border at Israeli troops. Israel responded by killing four members of ISIS right there at the Golan Heights. After that happened, uh, then the next day or so, the United Nations voted on the six resolutions. They were calling for a forced two-state solution negotiation, number two. They declared that Israel did not have proper authority over the city of Jerusalem, 
that they even said it was null and void. Their authority was illegal, and, uh, and so they had no jurisdiction. That was what they're saying. Of course, Israel doesn't, doesn't buy it. And then they said, in a third resolution out of the six, they demanded that Israel, they called them the occupiers, must withdraw from the Golan Heights and give up this border and give it back to Syria. Well, folks, this is insane. There's no way Israel's going to do this. And he, I'm bringing this, I'm putting all this in perspective for you because of what happened. After the United Nations vote of 153 to 7 on these six resolutions, a cloud, a pillar, a cloud hovered over the Golan Heights, right over the exact area where ISIS had attacked them, and all along the Golan there, that's where the United Nations told them to surrender from. Matter of fact, we have pictures there we'll show you where there's Israeli soldiers, of course, and they're, they're stunned by this. You have to understand, when you're in Israel, you rarely ever, ever see a cloud, let alone a pillar of cloud, a huge cloud, and what are the odds that it would hover over the Golan Heights after the United Nations voted and told you to have to give it up. It's as if God was saying to Israel, I am not only watching over the land, but I am present with you. And my promises from the Old Testament are just as good today for the nation of Israel. Matter of fact, go with me, if you will, to the book of Exodus chapter 14. The Bible tells us that the Lord says in verse 24, and it came to pass that in the morning, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of a cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Now, go back up to verse 13, same chapter, in Exodus 14, verse 13, and we understand what the scenario is. The children of Israel have just left Egypt, Moses and Aaron, are taking them out of Egypt. They have got their inheritance with them. They've taken their goats and their camel, their sheep, all their children, all their earthly belongings, and they've taken the gold and silver and some of the precious stones that the Egyptians had as they spoiled them as they left. And the Egyptians said, take it and go. But then Pharaoh, his heart hardened, decides to to make another attack, another run at the children of Israel. And here's where verse 13 comes in. And so they're standing by the Red Sea, and Moses is looking out over the Red Sea, thinking, how in the world are we going to get across? And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, and stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the mist of the sea. So God gives Moses a proclamation. I am with you. I will fight for you. I will not leave you. And the same thing is said to us today as Christians. The Lord said, I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. I'll stick closer than a brother. I won't leave you in the sixth trouble, nor forsake you in the seventh. You know, the Bible tells us if a man should stumble and fall, Six times, yea, he shall not be utterly dis destroyed, for the Lord upholdeth him in his hand. I'm here to tell you right now, God's coveted promises for the body of Christ, you can take it to the bank. You can guarantee that God is always on our side. And I wouldn't want to be living in this world, really, without Christ, without any... I mean, are you serious? Would you want to be just, uh, in a situation where you're depending solely upon yourself for your survival? for your destiny, for your eternal future? I don't think so. And neither would the children of Israel if they were out there in the wilderness. They needed a comfort. They needed to know God was with them, and he was. Matter of fact, look what it says in the Scripture in verse uh, 
uh, 17, And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And so an angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. This pillar of cloud, there it is again. Well, let's put it back on the screen. You'll see that that pillar of cloud, God was saying, I'm in this cloud. Now, folks, all right, so ISIS attacks Israel. Israel has to defeat them. That was just... It was just only four of them, but they defeated them. The United Nations, the whole world turns against Israel almost, 153 to 7. Thank God the United States still voted against it, and Canada voted against it, and Micronesia, and a couple small islands. But other than that, there was a lot of nations that abstained and didn't vote against Israel, but didn't vote for them, trying to be neutral. The vote was 153 to 7. So you get attacked. You're getting threatened every day by the Iranians. You have the Hezbollah in southern Lebanon with their rockets wanting to, wanting to attack you. You have Hamas in the Gaza Strip with their rockets getting them from Iran, wanting to fire them and attack you. Um, you have the Houthi rebels who are funded by Iran wanting to attack you. You have Al-Qaeda and Al-Nusa and ISIS and Syria's President Assad and his armies surrounding Israel. And Jesus even said, when, when you see the armies compassing Jerusalem, know that the, the, the time is at hand. Know that it's nigh, okay? And those things that are written shall be fulfilled. And so here we are realizing, just like in the days when the children of Israel were fleeing Egypt and they got Pharaoh on behind them coming and the sea in front of them. The Lord shows up in a huge cloud and says, I'm going to go before you. And I'm going to be here with you. Matter of fact, let's read that verse again in verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came to pass between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. It was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these so that one came not near the other all night. So God put a dividing pillar of cloud. And guess where this cloud shows up? Shows up right on the Golan Heights, right where they were attacked, right where the United Nations told them they had to surrender it, and it hovered right on the border of Syria. So it, had a, it was to the Israelis, it was, God was showing his presence to the, to the Israeli soldiers, and they got their iPhones, and, and they're filming, and they're, and they're taking pictures because they know the story of the Bible. Believe me, every Israeli soldier knows the story in the book of Exodus. And in numbers, they know God would use the great pillar of cloud for their protection. So they're standing there taking pictures. God is shining upon them, his, showing his presence. And then, of course, he's also bringing protection over his land. Are you serious? I'll be back with more on the pillar of cloud. Available from Paul Begley, his CD, Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger Traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. All right, this pillar of cloud, this great sign in the heavens. You know, one of the things Jesus said in the last days, he said there'll be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts have failed them for fear, for looking after those things that are coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man 
doing what? Coming in a cloud with power and great glory. God loves to use the cloud. Matter of fact, once the temple was built, uh, and in Solomon's temple, there, the Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies. And, of course, you had the brazen altar out in the outer court. You had the, you had the uh, laver, the brass laver, if you will, for the washing. The priest had to be clean before they went into the holies, the golden menorah, the shoebread table, uh, all of the uh, uh, prayers, the golden altar of incense. But then you go into the Holy of Holies, the only the high priest, once a year on Yom Kippur or the Day of Atonement, the mercy seat of God sits on top of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, it is pitch black in there. There's no light in there at all. Thick curtains, no light. Yet the priests could see because the Lord in a cloud, a glory cloud, would light up over top the Ark of the Covenant, showing that he was still in their presence. I mean, are you serious? So let's go back to the story here in Exodus chapter 14. Verse 21, it says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. I mean, that's an incredible wind, an east wind so strong it would part the Red Sea. Unbelievable. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon dry ground. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. I mean, this is a remarkable, remember the old Ten Commandments movie, uh, you know, with Charleston Heston and Moses and the parting, and everybody remembers when that first came out. Well, here you are with this spectacular, uh, miraculous move of God. And it says in verse 23, And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. I'm telling you right now, you better not touch the apple of God's eye you better not come against the nation of Israel. God's presence, his cloud is still hovering right over the very borders that were, uh, these are, this is coveted land. God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God promised that he would deliver his people. And after the Holocaust, and after all of the things that have happened and the scattering of the children of Israel around the world, and, and the world thought, Lucifer thought, he, he tried to exterminate every Jew during World War II. He tried to eliminate them and their DNA from the face of the earth. But God had a remnant, just like Ezekiel's prophecy in the 37th chapter of the book of Ezekiel, uh, when God led Ezekiel into a valley of dry bones. And he said to him, son of man, can these bones live? And he said, uh, uh, Lord, only thou knowest. He said, I want you to prophesy to these bones. I want you to tell them to get up. I want you to prophesy to the wind. I want, I want the power of God to come in. I want to, re, I want to do a rebirth of Israel. I want to bring them out of the uh, skin and bone situation and make a new uh, rebirth nation. And that's what happened. After the Holocaust, then the nation of Israel was rebirthed. And uh, as people came, uh, they came, uh, Holocaust victims came and ended up being a part of the rebirthing of Israel as a nation. It's amazing how God's presence, his, his, his word abideth forever. If you'll turn with me over to the book of Numbers in the 14th chapter, we'll read what the Lord said about it again in a couple verses here in verse 13. And Moses said unto the Lord, now the children of Israel had done a little complaining. They had done some, uh, they were bickering and complaining and murmuring. And so Moses said unto the Lord, the Egyptians, God said, I, if you want me to, I'll just wipe this bunch out and start over with you, Moses. But Moses said, no, 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 no. The Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. 
for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by day time in a pillar of cloud and in the pillar of fire by night. So Moses reminds the Lord that this covenant you made, we, if, if we were to break it and change it and alter the plan, that Pharaoh and all of the people that were still in Egypt would hear about this. Let's let them remember how you went before this nation of Israel, the children of Israel, with this great pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. And let's not change the plan. And folks, the Lord said, all right. Matter of fact, that's why this event that happened, there'll be naysayers who'll say, oh, Begley, you're making a big deal out of nothing. Uh, you know, there's been pillar of clouds before. We've seen these weather phenomenons. Yeah, but did you ever see it happen right after attacks over the Golan Heights in a way like that? I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I mean, there's another way. What else do you want me to do? I mean, God keeps showing up time and time again. He keeps reminding people that his word is true and every man's a liar. You know, the Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word abideth forever. And so this is the truth. Trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. Uh, the Lord tells you to trust him. And as a Christian, I want you to believe the Lord is always with you. Know that he's going to stay with you. Know that he's going to carry you through like uh, uh, footprints in the sand. Know that when the times of, of life gets difficult, and you don't know where to turn. When your back's against the wall, remember, his was against the cross. And he, he's going to be there for us in the most difficult times in history. Now, the, the glory cloud, we sometimes talk about the cloud of Jesus returning upon uh, from the heavens with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment upon the earth. He's coming in the cloud. He's coming in a cloud. He's coming with power and great glory. He's coming back, and we want to be ready. For an hour you think not, the Bible says, the Son of Man cometh. We can look to the east. We can look to the west. We can look for some type of a sign or some other type of a, uh, a indication that we're in the last days. But I'm telling you, just look to the word of the Lord. You'll find that God's word has never failed us. I would love for you to do this. Take a moment and do an inventory of your life and ask yourself, what are you going to do in such a time as this? Matter of fact, you can come to our website. Matter of fact, we got a fresh look on the website. Very, very nice look, very fresh look. We just upgraded it. And we have a, uh, you can come to our live shows. They're on every day from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern. Sunday Night Live is on every Sunday night from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern. And, and check it out. Our website has been upgraded, real easy to maneuver and navigate. Come to the live page. You'll see a chat room. Even when we're not live, the chat room's always live. Matter of fact, we have about 48 prayer partners around the clock. One or two people every hour are in there chatting or, or, or typing prayers. Actually, they're praying a lot. You can come in and communicate with them. You can chat with them. If you have a prayer request, they'll pray with you right on the spot live. If it's during my live broadcast, a lot of times I'll speak right to you directly as, as uh, we'll get uh, several thousand people actually show up in, in between all the three chat rooms we use. But right there at Paul Begley Prophecy, I'll, I watch it. I'll respond to you. We may be able to pray with you. We give altar calls for those that aren't saved. It's, it's a tremendous way to communicate with Christians and with people all around the world. You know, Google created a cloud, didn't they? Which one do you want to trust in? I'll be back in just a moment. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now, it has to do with actual 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. 
I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. Oh, yes, folks, I'm so serious about the situation right now that Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You know, you may want to get saved today. The Bible says the day you give the Lord your whole heart, he'll be found with you. Matter of fact, if you'll, uh, the Bible tells us that whosoever calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible tells us, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Would you like to pray? It's time to get right with God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to have all my sins covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm looking to you, Lord. I'm tired of trying to do this thing on my own. I'm believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that Yeshua is the Messiah, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of my sins. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. And I'm opening my heart's door to the Lord Jesus Christ to come into my life and to set me free. Because I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe he ascended to heaven. And I believe he's coming back. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith, in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved. I am saved. I, I confess him as my Savior. Praise God. God bless you. May the Lord bless you. The angels are dancing in the golden streets of glory. Your name is being written in the Lamb's book of life. Give, just, you know what, just, uh, it's all right. Feel the release. Feel the guilt and the shame of sin. It's gone. You're a child of God. Welcome to the family.